like there was 5,000 RTOs at the beginning of 2018. We're now into 2020 and there's just under three and a half thousand. So they're really catching up with all these people doing the wrong thing. So not that I wish that upon people, but it's good because getting rid of the, the slop or the mess. And that's really good for the industry because there was been so many dodgy people out there ripping people off, scammers. Yeah. Welcome to the Beers with a Minor podcast. My name is Mad Mumsy and I've been driving the huge dump trucks in Australian open cup mines for over 10 years now. I wish I had a dollar for everyone who said to me, how does a little thing like you drive those big trucks? Oh, you must be rich. How do I get a job doing that? My mining friends are asked these questions all the time too. This is what started the Mad Mumsy journey to share stories and tips from living a mining lifestyle and to let others know what it's really like. Tune in each episode as I sit down for a relaxed chat usually over a few beers, with a fellow miner. Women and blokes with various experience, roles and opinions share their lessons and stories with you. Not everyone is cut out to be a miner, but why not? What does it take to thrive and survive in this industry? Now, let's dig in. Get it? Dig? Mining? I crack me up. Hello and welcome to episode 66 of the Beers with a Minor podcast. My name is Mab Mumsy and in this happy hour episode, I speak with the actor groups, Sean Allman. Sean shares his mining life, why he started a training company and all about dodgy course providers and why he's not one of them. How can you find a course provider that you trust and should you even do a course and why and what are people's perceptions of doing a course before you get into the mines. We talk all about his dump truck operator course which is just one of many that he has and what the new starter in mining package course involves. This will be an ongoing connection as I finally found someone who's reputable, trustworthy and is a course provider that I'm happy to recommend to you. He is based down on the Gold Coast, and the courses operate out of Ipswich, or they can come to your site, which is a really good idea. So they've got a lot more coming in 2020. You'll hear a little bit about this in our conversation, and also find out if he wears his high-vis clothes on break, because he's a Gold Coast boy and, um, you know... They don't do that like they do here in good old Mackay and round Moorumbah. Everyone's mowing their lawns and going fishing in them. So we had a good conversation about lots of things. I'm sure you're going to love it. Now, let's dig in to the episode with Sean from Actor Group. Hello and welcome to the Beers with a Minor podcast, Sean Allman from Actor Group, Advanced Certified Training Australia. Welcome to the podcast, Sean. Hey, how are you? Uh, good, thanks. I'm looking forward to hearing all about your mining life, your mining journey, how you got in and what you actually do, and if we can talk about your, your business and all the courses that you create to help us miners and I'm especially interested to hear all about the new starter package. Now let's dig into the episode. Get it? Dig mining. Ha ha ha! Crack me up. <laughs> now the most important question of the day, as this podcast is called the Beers with a Miner podcast, I like to start these happy hour episodes with my guests sharing their favourite beverage, also their favourite time to enjoy it. It could be beer, wine, spirit, or perhaps even a cup of tea. What is yours, Sean? Uh, I'm not a beer drinker. I'm definitely spirits. uh, And Grey Goose vodka is my poison of choice. And obviously, if I'm not on the Grey Goose, I'm generally on the tequilas. So pretty much white spirits is my uh, poison of choice. And do you have... Any mixes with that or just straight? Yeah, so I'm Grey Goose and Orange. Um, Anyone that knows me knows, don't ask anything but get me a Grey Goose and Orange and I'm very pedantic about that. Um, Again, like I said, it's just my poison of choice that I've stuck with for 19, 20 years and um, if it ain't broken, you know, don't try and fix it, I think. And do you have it in a short glass or a tall glass? Uh, Short glass, yeah. 
for glass with ice? Uh, yeah, love your ice. Obviously, the more ice, the better, basically. Uh, don't mind it strong as well. If it's too weak, then you're just wasting, <laughs> wasting good drinking space with some orange juice. But I definitely keep up my vitamin uh, C, that's for sure. <laughs> that's okay. So with the ice, do you keep the ice in the glass? Or yeah, ice in the glass and obviously top it up every time it's mixed or if I'm out, basically, uh, just get a fresh glass, fresh ice. Always, always got the ice. I am a beer drinker. So, and yeah. I don't mind a red wine with my, um, with my meal and then maybe that's yeah. so good. I might yeah, well, one. <laughs> um, No, I'm the same. I love a Shiraz, definitely. Yeah, but I'm easy, you know. I don't have to have a short glass, tall glass. You know, is it ice, no ice, lemon? Do you have lemon or lime or anything with it? Some people tend to try and get fancy and throw it in, but no, it's not really a, a choice. I certainly wouldn't request it. <laughs> cool. And what's your most favourite time to enjoy that? Oh, uh, weekends. I don't really drink through the week. I'm more of a, uh, not fitness fanatic, but I like to uh, get out and about and enjoy my gym. Uh, but if there's a special occasion, I'll... I don't really drink by uh, taste. I drink to get drunk. So um, pretty much if there's anything on, I like obviously socialising and having a drink or a celebration drink. I've only really started drinking wine the last two or three years and I'll drink that over some a nice meal or a chance to unwind. But otherwise, yeah, if I get started on the vodkas, that's me. I'm sort of done usually. <laughs> cool. I'm away. All right, Sean, so let's get on to the mining. I could, sometimes my uh, drinking conversations go way too long. <laughs> but I, That's all right. All I know really about your mining journey is that you've been doing it for about 10 years. So how did you get started and what is it that you do? Started, I used to do sales. Um, and basically, I've done that for so long. I was very successful in that industry, but just wanted a change. I sort of wanted something that was a career or a future. Sales was my go-to but again it was repetitive the same thing and I didn't really see me going any further than where I was and it was time to sort of make a change. I was fortunate enough I basically sat down to do a standard 11 course. I met a gentleman that was a trainer and uh, we just connected in talking about private stuff basically and he linked he sort of told me the ins and outs his missus was uh, she wrote resumes and just sort of told me what I do or don't need. And I started in WA, worked over there for oh, just over two and a half years. Uh, I was sick of the travel and basically uh, the industry started to pick up in Queensland. I ended up going in Northern Queensland for probably another two and a half years. Uh, but the whole journey, while that was taking place, I still stayed in contact with uh, one of the trainers that got me into it. He wanted to start his own business, but didn't really know how to run a business and I'd run businesses all my life. So we connected up. We basically started uh, a training organization that wasn't actually licensed to begin with. We did third party training through uh, official RTOs, uh, sort of subcontracting training and the mining industry was booming then. I'll just ask a question for those that don't know what an RTO is. Yes. Uh, an RTO is a registered training organisation, so they're licensed to sign off on um, all qualified, uh, certified training throughout uh, Australia. Yeah. Now, when you were in WA, when like when you yeah. first started, what were you actually doing? Uh, I was just operating. I learned quite a few machines. I was lucky enough over there. I uh, learned how to operate a grader, a dozer, and uh, your dump trucks. Yep. I didn't get on the electric trucks until I come to Queensland. And basically from there, I jumped on the Komatsus um, and the Levers. And I've been fortunate enough at the mine I'm currently working at to even jump on the Cat Electrics as well, the new uh, 974, I think they are. 795s? Um, no, no, nine, uh, 974s they are. They're, they're a, a cheaper version, I believe, of the uh, 974. Yeah. Yeah. What did I say? Nine, nine seven, seven four. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's not a cat. Come on, you're, you're right. talking to a cat girl. <laughs> yeah, right. You're right. Yeah, no, no, sorry. Got to, you know, take this. So I've driven the seven nine five cat electrics. They were the first ones yeah. to come out, and um, yeah, the seven nine fours have recently come out. They're just that bit smaller, but 
It's just like yeah. driving a normal cat truck, but with no cat poo going up the ramp, no gear changes. <laughs> it's just like, what? Yeah. It's, it's no, yeah, no they, uh, different. Yeah, I definitely prefer the Lee Bears better. Um, I don't know. It's just something about the drive. The, the cats look, uh, everyone on our side, especially we've got all new equipment out there, so we shouldn't be complaining. Um, <laughs> but they definitely, like I said, they haven't really spent, you'd, you'd think a newer truck that'd spend more money on the, um, the technology side of things and the dash. But in saying that, like I said, they all do the same thing. And obviously, like I said, uh, I've never liked cat, tr- cat seats in trucks. Mm. Um, so that's probably the only other problem. But again, like I said, they still still do the job. And I tell you what, they tip off. The, they get everything, the full load over. So um, those are drivers are very happy, that's for sure. I was just going to say that. So have they figured out yet how to make the indicators turn off? Like in your car? <laughs> Cat, no, definitely cats not. Cats don't. You go around the corner no. and you've got to turn the indicator off or it just stays yeah. off. Come on. Yeah. Cat. Six million dollars and we don't want to spend another couple of hundred to figure that out. That's too no, easy. No. Get your shit together. Uh, I, I must tell them. I, I tweet with them quite often. I'll let them know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Say, hey, listen, we've just got a new fleet in and nothing's changed. Pick yeah, game come on. on. I've, I haven't driven Lee Bears. In my opinion, I think uh, the cats are better than the Komatsu's. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, from what as I said, I've only driven those three. But the the Lee Bear to me is yeah, great truck. The performance, the the handling, everything's great. Uh, people are still going to whinge about it, but that's mining for you, I think. No, oh, they're just gonna, some people just that's how they are. They're just going to have a whinge about whatever yeah. it is. From a truck, what did you do next? Did you do water cart? Uh, uh, yeah, I've done water cart. Uh, I basically, I haven't really done much mining in water carting. Um, I've done a lot of water carting for civil. So when I left uh, in 2012, I left mining um, to start our own training organisation and basically keeping it short. Uh, we were quite successful for three to four years, uh, but then I had a fallout with that partner at the time. Basically, he was just your typical miner, I guess you could say, or old school miner where he just wanted to take shortcuts and was extremely lazy. And I didn't take enough focus in what we were doing in regards to the training side of things. So we basically separated and I decided, look, we're going to get out there and do it by ourselves. Um, and we started our own RTO. We've got, our, we've got all licensed up and we haven't looked back. We've been licensed since 2018. And um, while there's a lot of speed bumps and new regulations, because uh, unfortunately a lot of people in the training industry um, have misled and taken advantage of the funding um, and the different opportunities that the government has thrown at them. The government have really started to crack down in 2016, 2017, which for us is a good thing because um, the regulators, although they are, can be a handful, they're really like there was 5,000 RTOs uh, at the beginning of 2018. We're now into 2020 and there's just under three and a half thousand. So they're really catching up with all these people doing the wrong thing. So not that I wish that upon people, but it's good because it's getting rid of the, the slop or the mess of these people that aren't doing the right thing. And that's really good for the industry because there was been so many dodgy people out there ripping people off, scammers. Yeah. I've just actually done my first ever paid Facebook ad for Mad Monster. No, I'm just testing for something that's coming basically but pointing them yeah. to my online mining school where I've just got some um, online courses and the first comment under it was oh another scam looks like a yeah. scam to me and I was like no it's me yeah. <laughs> and, no, no, else no. Something and I'm like oh should I say anything and I ended up commenting and say it's it's because of the scams that are out there that I do what I do. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly why I've started this, mate. And then a few of my people who I'd even forgotten I ever worked with, some of yeah. them, because it's, you know, you can uh, target an audience. So I had keywords like people that have interest in mining or whatever. Um, yeah. So I've bobbed up in their Facebook feed and, yeah. oh, Leanne, there you are. Hi. Oh, man, you know, yeah, good on you, mate. You've got all that time out there. You should tell them how it is. And, and it feels yeah. better now because I've got a bit more <laughs> support without me having to say, hang on, mate, I'm not a ripper. <laughs> but how do you yeah, know? Yeah. I've gone to some 
online stuff because I've researched a lot as well. And I've gone to some and they won't even tell you a price. You've got no. to, I'm like, well, that's dodgy yeah. in itself. You, I notice your course, you're straight up, got the price on there. I'm like, now I'll yeah. talk to them. And he yeah, was, yeah, exactly. No, we, I had the same experience when we tried to do the same, you know, the online marketing platforms. Unfortunately, um, social media in general is a platform for opinionated, uh, offended people that uh, can type anything they want behind a computer and they're the first to judge or... And look, I, I assume a lot of them have been burned or ripped off before. That's why they want to voice their opinion. Um, the only concerns that I used to try to defend our business about was I used to try and do exactly that. I would try to reply and give an answer to everybody to justify or prove it. But I come to the point where sometimes just arguing with people that they're not even genuinely serious about trying to prove a point. They just want to belittle you or bag you out or you know get something off their chest basically so i i we pretty much avoid that now um we've got a license you know if anyone had been ripped off or misled by us um there's a google um comment section where you can leave reviews you know and again people can leave nasty reviews in there that aren't even true but uh, we haven't had that yet so we're fortunate enough that we're trying to do the right thing and um the best part is like i said if someone had been misled or ripped off before um, there's so many avenues now that you can report and dob in these people. So, you know, you just, you got to be kill cautious. It's like that in any industry. If there's money to be made and especially when the government's throwing funding at it, you know, there's people that are just getting jumped all over that and really tarnish the industry. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do at Active Group is basically stand by legislation and, and you know, defend and argue what, what's true and, and correct and uh, hope that obviously people can follow us and spread the word through our training and our experience, um, you know, into the, through podcasts like yourself or through social media and again, in the mining industry. And whereabouts are you based for those? We're days? based in Burley Heads on the Gold Coast. Oh, uh, so, terrible spot yeah. to be. Hey, when you're on the other, you know, Dice on, yeah, look, Warren Bar or <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm born and bred Gold Coast. So again, why would I want to leave? Uh, look, obviously, it's it does become a bit challenging not being uh, having an office based, you know, in the mining towns and stuff like that. But we're still growing, and we we never uh, deny that to people. We've been licensed since two thousand and eighteen, and again, ASQA and uh, the regulators are constantly changing, putting speed bumps in front of us. So it's been a longer journey than what we're expecting. There's not many people on the Gold Coast that can provide this type of service. Um, we've got a few competitors, but at the same time, um, their history speaks for themselves. So I'm not here to tarnish them. Basically, like I said, their, their reputation and history speaks for themselves. And we're trying to sort of be and provide a better uh, service than other people at the right price. And that's, that's all you can do, really. Yeah, that's and right. That, that's the same with me. Like, going back to what you were saying about don't answer everyone. Thank you. That's good advice. I won't. <laughs> yeah. You know, anyone well, it is, cause cause could caught be, up in it. You know, and then if they really want to do their, what do you call it? Do diligence and have a look at what yeah, I'm yeah. doing. They'll soon figure out, oh yeah, she might not be dodgy. Well, you'll find exactly the ones that are the, the ones that cause the, you know, the headaches. They're, the, they're never going to do the due diligence anyway. They're, yeah. they're not there to actually, you know, have a logical conversation with you. They're there to basically throw in their two cents and then they'll go and voice their opinion about something else that's offended them that day. So in my advice, ignore it because uh, the other thing you do is just delete it. You don't have to block them. Let them, you know, uh, enjoy your service. Um, you'll find they're not really repeat offenders. If they are repeat offenders, just delete them and block yeah. them because, again, they're not there for the right reasons. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, so you said Asper a couple of times. What is that? Australian Asper. safety. That's the Australian Skills uh, Quality. Gosh, I'm, I'm getting lost now. Uh, authority. So basically, they're, they're the uh, regulators that look after the training industry throughout Australia, uh, not just for mining. Okay, they're basically, they'll cover any type of education, training or learning, whether it be business, hair and beauty, um, civil construction, safety, uh, whatever it may be. So, because 
well, last year, year before, time flies. It's probably around the time you got registered, I'd, I'd think. They had all the inquiries, the government inquiries into the contractors and dodgy yeah. labour hire and all of that. And that's yeah. when the screws started coming on. And yeah. quite a few, they have just gone by the wayside. Um, oh, yeah. And it's really good. I, I did a submission into that and said my two bobs worth, you know, yeah. um, because it was a time that we had to speak up to, to yeah. stop people just making money off people and then not knowing anything. Like you go on and doing your standard 11, someone's never even been on the mine site. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. what, mate? I beg your pardon? <laughs> Yeah. Well, we pride ourselves again. We, we have a lot of concerns and um, discussions lately with regulations and legislation in regards to hypothetically that exact point, the standard 11, because the regulations are in black and white. Uh, unfortunately, the problem is ASQA have their regulations and legislation. And then you've got, for example, the standard 11 is the Queensland Coal Board Mining Act. Uh, that was originally from 2011. It's recently been updated in 2017. Um, not really much has changed, but again, there's a few finer points that have changed. And as an RTO, we need to meet the regulations uh, to uh, that ASQA obviously implement, um, and the, like the, the Australian Skills Authority um, and the, the vet industry altogether. We, we need to meet those to ensure that we meet compliance and currency. Um, obviously, we've got to transition some units every two years to make sure, again, that they're current and compliant. And unfortunately, majority of the mining industry, are, I would have to say, 10 years, five to 10 years behind. And I'm not saying all of them, but um, they're just not up to date with the regulations. And the problem with a lot of RTOs, they're in the same boat. Uh, the regulators can only uh, audit you know, a certain amount of uh, RTOs and some of them also are dodgy and pull the, shoot, uh, the wool over their eyes, I guess you could say. Um, so there are plenty of people out there that are still doing the wrong thing and the dodgy thing. And we, we say that as well in regards to prices. Some people say, oh, I can go next door and get it for $20 or I can get it for $100 uh, and I can get it in a half a day. Look, you know, <laughs> You've just got to think logically. If you're going to go and sit on a machine and pay $20 and you get your ticket in a half a day's training, how safe do you really think you're going to be? And, and, and that's the challenging, um, well, the challenge that we have as an RTO because obviously that's the, com the competitive market as a business we've got to try and compete against. But we would rather basically charge the value of our, our service. And we also have a... a, a um, we have to meet compliance and we have regulations to meet, which is mandatory hours. Um, and also we want to make sure that when people leave here, that they're fully skilled and competent to go out and not put other people's you know, lives in danger, let alone their own. And that's really important because oh, over the years, so many times um, you see courses advertised, you can get your dump truck ticket or you can get this ticket or that ticket, which are now called RIIs. And yeah. so people are buying them and out on the mine site, people are saying, oh, they got that. You can tell they got their license out of the freaking cornflakes box. Yeah. Um, and I've got a section in my online co course for people trying to get in. It's a free course, just an overview. Um, yeah. Should I do a course? Yeah. And... I say the same thing. Well, it depends on the course and what you're going to yeah. get. Um, and from what I can see, you, you know, you have quarry, you can go in a quarry and do actual driving a dump truck and all of that. And I'm pretty sure I know a couple of people who've probably done your course. They got the job because this, and this was a few years ago. He, and he's now a trainer, actually, that guy. Hey, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> he listens all the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> My number one fan. And he, he did that course, paid out his three or four grand, and but he said it gave him an overview of what it was and it also showed on his resume and at his interview that he really wanted it enough to go and spend some money and invest in himself to find yeah. out a lot more about it. Um, and so I've said that to a few people over the years and I, I put that in my course, but I say don't just pay out when you go online and they email you and stuff, ring them up, ring them, talk to them, find out where they are, 
to, you know, and to consider things like where is it? You might have to pay for accommodation. How many days yeah. is it? You know, there's so many things to look into. So, yeah. but that's really all I know about doing dump truck courses because I learned in dump truck in the mine site, which a lot of, if yeah. you're lucky enough to get a clean skin role, that's where you're yeah. going to learn. That's where you'll get your RII. But yeah. if you have the opportunity and the money to go and do it, um, I think it's I I think it's a good idea if you've got oh, time and also you know you you could you might get a job in some in construction and or in yeah. a quarry or something until you get that dream job in the mines you know or you might decide yeah. oh no nah, actually I don't want to do this yeah mm. so can well, you tell us I about yours. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I'm glad you asked. Uh, we get inquiries all the time and everyone says, oh, why would you waste your money? Don't waste your money. What, what people have to understand for starters, a trainer's daily rate, okay? Most trainers will hire themselves out at $500 to $600 a, a day, okay? Um, we also then have the actual machine in itself, okay? And you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of dump trucks just sitting there that also require fuel and oil and parts and replacement and maintenance and so on and so forth. Our dump truck course alone by itself is a five day course. Okay. And then we also have the machine and the equipment. The, the thing is, is you're not just going to sit in a truck, start it up. You get to learn your pre-starts. You get to walk around. So you do everything that you would do actually on a mine site. You also get to interact with uh, stop signs, with giveaways, with carrying loads, with empty, um, e empty trucks. You also get taught how to back up under an excavator or a loader, okay? And you also get taught to back up to a tip head and how to do this safely and basically what they call a standard operating procedure, okay? Uh, these are the things that you're not going to get doing a day's course or an online course or anything like that. Driving and around a car park or something. That's exactly right. So you're getting live, actual mine site experience. Now, yes, it is a quarry, okay, but there's nothing different between a quarry and a mine site besides the fact that you could be moving dirt or you could move, be moving a bit of rubbish. What goes in the back is nothing different to what you're actually doing actually on the site. Um, and you'll have a trainer that sits with you. So one day is a theory assessment, okay? The other four days is a practical assessment where you're actually sitting in a truck and operating that truck for a full four days. Mm. Um, in relation to our new starter package, what we do is in relation to getting a job in Queensland, you need what's obviously called a standard 11. So that's a generic induction, which we conduct over a two day period, which is done at the end of the haul truck course. So it's a total of the seven days. Uh, now we charge 399 for that. All right, that's if you combine them as a new starter package or we charge 3,500 for the um, haul truck package by itself. And look, many people call me every day and they ask me straight up, is this gonna guarantee me a job? I will tell you right now, it won't. There is no such thing as guaranteeing you a job in the mines. Um, I'd like to voice my opinion on, uh, if anyone has any crews or questions, just like yourself, I'm a free book of advice. You're welcome to call us and providing I'm available, I'll give you that cons that information that you need. Um, in regards to the new starter package, yep, it's exactly what you were, what you were leaning towards. It's, it's basically going to give you the experience and the extra skill set that the mining companies are looking for. The most advantage that it's going to give you is when they call you for that interview process, and they start talking about pre-starts. They start talking about safety and JSAs and risk assessments and everything that relates to the actual mining industry. Uh, you're going to be able to answer these questions because you have actually experienced this. Uh, otherwise, I could write you a ticket. You go out and you get through your interview process and people go, oh, what a waste of time and money. Well, because you're not doing the actual on-site training and learning how to actually operate a dump truck. And the other thing that I've seen is when people have that, you know, the dodgier ones. Um, yeah. That sounds bad. Not dodgier than your... No, that's but, real. Like, that's what they are. The dodgy. <laughs> the do the, yeah, the ones where they've driven around the car park, got a tick and flick, bought a carton of beer, <laughs> however they got them, and they've yep. gone out on site. Maybe yep. they got through the interview process. Oh, look, he's got his dump truck RII. That's cool. Then yep. you get out there, you do your RPL, 
yep. recognise prior learning. Correct. Is that what it is? Yes. Yep, um, you're doing well. <laughs> so many acronyms. Um, I yeah. actually have a podcast episode and it's, it's a course in my online area, uh, Mining Terms You Need to Know. And it's all yep. the, well, shitloads of them, all the acronyms. Yep. And then the last hour is me and my stepdad, who's a trainer, has been doing it for donkey's years, talking about all the stuff no one's going to tell you. Like that's yeah, a part that's and, nice. you know, <laughs> I just yeah, yeah, yeah. so many things, all of the, all of the giggle glossary, I called it, because you're not going to learn. Yeah. And if you've got a bit of a clue of that before you get out there, you know what sort of terms you're going to hear on the dump or at the digger or, or, or you know. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, but um, so you're doing your RPL and they go, righto, mate, so let's go. Or do a walk around. You might pass the walk around. You get in with the trainer and go, okay. And you don't even know how to start it up. No, I've seen that, I've seen that with a digger driver. Oh, he ended yeah. up a big boss too. But he was a digger driver, apparently. Got in the digger. Yeah. Oh, I could drive 996. Got in a big 996. He's like, ooh. Couldn't do it, didn't know enough. And they yeah. said, Get out, get out. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you're gonna lose all credibility and you're gonna have to do the full training. Yeah. And then you're gonna give anyone who has paid for a dump truck course the same um perception. The people that are out there are gonna have that perception that or not necessarily just a dump truck course, you know, you dig it and all of that. Because yeah. of those sort of reasons, I've seen it. It, they don't realise that you're legally a, a, uh, accountable now. You go out there and hurt someone or hurt yourself, the first thing they look at is where you were trained, what qualification you've got. And when they go back to that organisation and they, can, they can't prove that you've done a mandatory 40 hours in learning to operate a dump, that's the law. The law states you must do a minimum of a 40-hour week learning a dump truck and demonstrate uh, a mandatory of eight to 16 hours in theory and the remainder in practical. If you don't, if you can't demonstrate that a student has done that, you should not be giving them that certificate. Therefore, they're not competent or compliant to go to site. And this is why we have so many injuries. We have so many incidents because people are taking shortcuts. And again, I don't want to sound like a stiff or, you know, I wasn't exactly a law abiding citizen growing up. <laughs> but I can tell you right now, I'm learning now from the incidents and the, the injuries that I hear and see of, that majority of the time when they're doing their investigations, there's always a reason why. And somebody's taking a shortcut. Somebody uh, hasn't done their job in regards to checking the equipment or checking the safety side of things. Or, you know, they're fatigued, their oh, mind's not on the job, they're texting, they're, whatever the scenario may be. Uh, and generally, the, the reasons why is because they've, they've failed to, you know, meet that compliance and that currency. So that's why we try to push it. If we can stick to that and, and get everyone out of here and qualified and, and safe, uh, I, again, I know it sounds boring and everyone goes, oh, you know, it's boring. I don't want to do my paperwork. True, nobody does. But what it's going to teach you and remind you is of the safety aspects and what you do or don't need to know. And... You're going to have that for your whole mining life, paperwork, yeah. computer stuff. That's exactly right. You, when it rains, we have new procedures we are all going to sit here and do. Here, write that down. Yep, sign, yeah. sign there, sign there, sign. It's part of mining life. If you can't That's deal right. with that, don't go. There's well, you're way. getting paid. You're getting paid to sit there and do it. I, I tell everyone, they're like, oh, why do you do your pre-starts and why do you do your slams or your take fives? Because I'm getting paid. Like, either way, I'm still getting paid. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, you know, I've seen people do pre-starts and I, I've just put my bag down and I've, you know, got my isolation lock out and yeah. locking off. They're up, they've done their, they haven't even done that. They go, yeah, got six wheels. <laughs> or they they usually say, got four wheels. and like, nah, it's got six, mate. <laughs> And then they, yeah, right. you know, they get up and they're, they're like, what? And they could have no brakes. It could, like, there could be a hose off. There could be anything. You could go out there and you could kill me or yeah, yourself yeah. or someone else or just wreck a machine or whatever it is, you know. Mm -hmm. So do your bloody pre-starts. 
at least. Yeah, yeah like start, I said, test you know, memory. I mean, every all the things, but come on. <laughs> well, you're getting paid a lot of money to do it, and what frustrates me, as I said, I'm not here to bust people's balls, but I reckon I speak to. 40, 50 people a week, if not, you know, a couple of hundred to thousand a year of people screaming and begging and doing anything they possibly can to get a role in mining. And then, you know, you go back out to the mines and you see these people that are just, you know, they're not happy to be there. They're taking shortcuts. They're lazy. They're whinging. They're complaining. And, and it's sad because, you know, there's people out there that will do anything to get that job. So... You know, I try to say, well, if you don't like it, leave. You know, I don't want to hear your whinge and sort of bitch about it. Basically, you know, leave because there's a million other people out there that are keen to do your job and they're busting, the, you know, biting at the bit, I should say, to, to get in. That's right. How many times when you're out there and you hear, especially Big Boss, say, well, everyone knows where the gate is, we'll shake the tree and more monkeys will fall out. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's Actually, right. They go real the guy... quiet then, don't they? Oh, it's like, I was stunned. I'm like, oh. I'm not a monkey, <laughs> but that's what he meant. There's, you know, you don't yeah. like it, go, plenty more will come, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, so, that's right. Oh, yeah, and that's that's the thing is people are so desperate to get in, but I think what happens, Sean, is they, well, we know, they get the golden handcuffs on. Yeah. And they can't leave because they've yeah, got the yeah. big mortgage, they've got all the toys yeah. they're paying off. They can't, they cannot survive on a normal wage. They have That's to be normal. in the mines. They can't even get sick as a contractor. They have to go yeah. to work because they can't afford a day off, you know. And they don't want to work Monday nine to five. Exactly. They don't want a real job, you know. No, that's right. <laughs> I actually left because I did want one for a change. I was, yeah, yeah. I but imagine. I also got all of this that I do as well. So I was still yeah. very connected to mining. Oh, one thing I did want to ask you is, do you have many women who do the course? courses? Uh, yeah, we do. Well, I try to explain to anyone that calls up, like I said, there's a specific amount of Indigenous that the mining companies require. Um, you would have heard of ladies in mining and stuff like that. So that's uh, quite prominent where in the mine I'm at especially. Um, and same thing uh, with the, the females. They, they want a sp specific amount of females. I don't know what they are in different mines, um, but they're constantly increasing. Um, you know, uh, I hate to admit it, I'm not being sexist or anything like that, but they say that statistically women are safer on, they're probably uh, better on the gear than the men, but, you know, men are still men. We're sort of like to get in there and get it done. Um, but, yeah, look, we have a lot of women coming through. Um, and as I said, I, I really try to encourage the women to do so because, uh, again, not being sexist, but they've got a better opportunity to get in. They're looking for more women. There's some women don't think that they would ever be able to mine or do those sort of jobs. Uh, it's sort of got a, uh, a reputation of being a man's industry, but... It's not like oh, we've got women on our side and, again, some of them are a lot better than the men, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of uh, women starting to be bosses and superintendents and mine managers oh, yeah. and all sorts of things, yeah. and it's great and I love it. And um, I won't go too much on about the women, women side of things because my listeners know where I stand on all that, but um, on the, I have had some men say, oh, well, you see it in the certain Facebook groups especially yep. mining Facebook groups that I tell people to have a look at, but don't ask a question in there because you will get hammered um, yep. a lot of the times. But that's mining. That can be mining too. That could be your crew. So think about that. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, they, they say, oh, how do I get a job in the mines? Um, what's it like out there? And they go, don't bother, love, unless you've got tits or you're brown. Like I've seen <laughs> comments like that. I'm like, fuck, oh, you can't say that. But they are. They're saying it on social media. And then yeah, everyone's like, yeah, yeah. or, you, you know, you're, you're going to get, um, you know, the under the table things. And so many, like, it's full. It can get incredibly full on in there. I, yeah. <laughs> I cringe and I look more for research but, you know, and to see what the voice is because I also write for Shift Miner magazine and stuff. So I've got to yeah. be on the ball of what, what the current thing issues are. And that is one. And I've written about that as well. I'll just say this, but someone said to me, well, okay, women are getting more opportunities because of targets, 20% by 2020 and all that sort of stuff, certain big companies yeah. have got. Um, and the same with the Indigenous side of things. But for all the other years of mining up until then, 
well, it was just men. So yeah, I'd definitely. never thought about it like that. I was like, well, the men, it was just men for all that time. So now it can be yeah. a few women as well, okay? Is that all right with you lot? And, and it is, it has to be. And I say to the guys, yeah. and I'll just remind this to my listeners, especially you old school guys, is, oh, fucking women, you know, they shouldn't be out here or whatever, those sort of people. And a lot of them been burnt, and I can understand that, like we were saying before. But yeah, but they're the first ones that don't like mind a little bit of eye candy either, so they yeah, contradict exactly. themselves. Exactly. But what I like to say to them is think about that if that was your daughter or your granddaughter or your sister or like me, if it was your mum or your nana that's out there, yeah. would you like them to be treated the way you're about to treat that woman? What you how you're mm. about to speak to them? So, just yeah. hopefully, you know, a lot of people are getting better. Well, they have to you know they're out there and if you can't handle it well you're getting a lot of shit so yeah that's it look i, I you know not that the gold coast it's gold coast city but gold coast is only really becoming a little city now i was i've been born here born and bred for over 36 years so i've seen it turn from a little town into a mini city i guess you could call it that but yeah. you know it's a big change for me because i don't go hunting you know i fish but not commonly as what a, a most miners do um, and basically, if you're not pigging or if you're not hunting or if you're not camping or if you're not fishing, then or if you're not measuring bloody reels on your fishing rods or your tow your tow bars, there's not much for me to have a conversation with these blokes about. So um, I understand those ways, the country ways or the mining ways, whatever you want to call it. Everyone comes from different areas, um, but yeah. And look, I'll have to be brutally honest. Uh, uh, mining currently is still not for every female out there. Um, mining in general, not you don't have to be just a female. You can be male. Some people wouldn't be able to put up with the uh, the environment out there. But um, I think that's in any industry, you know. Obviously, I think we're in 2020. Uh, people are a little bit more understanding about being equal and all the rest of it. Some people still disagree on equal rights or um, they're sexist, if you want to call it that. But Look, as a majority, especially my side of the sites I've worked at, most of them are uh, pretty lenient to each other and pretty understanding. And most of the women there, you know, they dish it as much as they can. They sort of take it at times. So, yeah, like I said, it's, 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 it's a bit of a culture. And you either fit into that culture or you don't, I guess. Yeah, that's it. And that's exactly why I have the podcast, why I've got the online courses, why I do all the things is just to give people a... a a look in the saying is behind the kimono, you know, like what yeah. it's really like. But I like to say uh, inside the high vis shirt, but now that just sounds creepy because I'm not yeah. flashing my shirt <laughs> <laughs> at all. Um, but I've had, because I've been on the ABC and stuff and I've that they've said to me that it seems like such a secretive community. The miners don't want to talk about what it's like out there, especially if something bad happens and stuff. And I've had a few, you know, I won't go on about that, but I've had a voice about that. But um, I just want to tell people what, what you know, what it's like, the basics, basic, you know, we, we've covered stuff about laundry etiquette, like what the shit that goes on in the laundry, <laughs> yeah. people throwing your bloody stuff out of the dryer and putting it on the washing machine and, all, you know, yeah. that's just one. Mars bars in the dryers. Oh, I haven't heard that one. I think someone, when I did that one and I asked people to share their story, someone said they know someone who put a stubby in the washing machine. Uh, no, well, I've been everywhere. I've seen folks put, um, if you take someone's stuff out and put it in the dryer, they'll put a Mars bar in your dryer. And uh, oh, people yeah. learn real quick. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's it. But so that's why I do what I do anyway, but people know that. Um, so we'll start to wrap up. So I know you wanted to head off shortly. Can I just ask you two more questions, if that's all right? Yeah, look, go through the list. I'm, I'm happy to go through the entire list. Okay. Awesome. I see it. Well, I better get on here. Bye, kids. <laughs> Bye, worries. Now for a word from our sponsor, Julia Hartman and the Bantax Accounting Group. Julia's my awesome accountant. She's written two books with financial expert Noel Whitaker. And she's got a passion to help us miners make the most out of our hard-earned cash. She's got heaps of tips 
and make sure that we get every cent we are meant to get and is right on the ball with everything. If you head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners, that's B-A-N-T-A-C-S, you can download a free booklet all just for us miners. And there's also a spreadsheet in there that helps you check off what tools you have for your trade, like your isolation lock, work boots, seven shirts, all of these sorts of things. And you can weigh them up and it'll tell you if you qualify weight-wise to claim your trips out to work. And that's just one of the things that they've got over there. So I strongly urge you to head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and see what they can do and find your nearest office as we come up to tax time. They're really on the ball, know what's going on with the tax department and there's heaps of other free information like property investing. If you really plan on doing some great things with your money, you want to do that, right? If you want to sell your house, can save a lot of money if you find out what to do first rather than in hindsight. And Julia, she'll, you know, make sure you get it right. And if you do it wrong and then go and see her, she'll <laughs> she'll up you <laughs> in the nicest possible way because she really cares about us and wants us to keep our money and not give it to the tax department. Anyway, head over to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and tell them Mad Mumsy sent you. This is my most favourite sound in the world. You ready? What? <laughs> Beautiful. I'm a can drink. Get on with that one. Yeah, everyone knows that. So, um, I've started asking people about their PPE, right? Yeah. Personal protective equipment. So you get your mining issues each time you go to a new site and all of that. What do you do with your old PPE? Your old shirts? Your old Hard hats, boots, what are you doing? Uh, I just trash them, throw them straight in the bin, really. You, yeah. don't, wear, you don't wear a mowing or doing fishing? Nah, or... again, I'm more, I'm, I'm from the Gold Coast, so uh, look, that's a that's a funny conversation. <laughs> no high vis friends. on the Gold Coast, mate, no high vis. Uh, yeah, look, they would be, but like I said, I we have a laugh because... Um, you know, some of my co-workers or people I know, same thing. You'll see them on, on their days off and they're still wearing their work shirts. They'll go pigging in their work shirts. They'll go fishing in their work shirts. Um, but, yeah, I think that's more of a country thing rather than a, um, a city thing. City people can be a little bit obnoxious, I guess, or caught up in fashion and trends and all that other sort of bullshit. But, yeah, um, yeah I certainly... The minute I can get that high vis off, she's uh, straight in the wash and straight in the cupboard rather than, I don't have any desire to bloody chuck her on while I'm not working. Well, see, I, even here, I don't really wear my high vis unless I have to go to site. Um, if I can, I just try to put on high vis vests. That way I've still got my sort of business clothes on rather than, well, not business clothes. I still wear a polo shirt and stuff. But yeah, the, the less uh, long sleeves and long pants that I can wear while I'm back here, the better, because uh, I am from the Gold Coast, it's still stinking hot. Oh. Um, but yeah, no, anything that it's sort of seen as used by a date, she's in the trash. And um, well, the advantage of mining is there's always uh, PPE at the ready, so you, you don't have to have. Uh, we actually, I won't name names, but there's a gentleman at our site, I had a laugh with some of the operators there. Every day, I just, I don't know how I picked up on it, but every day you grab a new pair of bloody specs. And I was like, this guy's every day. And I said, have a look. I guarantee him for a month or two, we just had a laugh. Every day he grabbed a pair. And I had to pull him up. I said, mate, what are you, what are you doing? Why do you grab a new pair every day? So they're scratch. I said, how can you scratch them every freaking day? Like, oh, well, you know, they're free. What's it matter? I was oh, like. Oh, they're free. There it is. Yeah. But I said, have you taken the piss, huh? And I was like, you know, one a week or one every couple of days. But I said, one every day? Shit. You, you, it's crazy. <laughs> Well, and they're the sort of people that spoil it for everyone else and they make it that uh, you have to put a number in a machine and you only get it allocated and it's all recorded. Oh, really? And I've been oh, on site yeah. where it's gone like, this is getting out of hand, guys. You can't just <laughs> keep taking yeah, them every I'm... day. Same thing. Like, fuck. And yeah, they, yeah, they are yeah. really hard to scratch. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's how you treat them, I guess. But no, I haven't experienced that yet, like fortunate enough. But I'll tell you what, if we keep taking these glasses, we might be next. Exactly, which is why I thought I'd bring it up. Um, yeah, no, no. Now, steel cap boots, when you're out on site or when you're in camp and everything, have you ever yeah. had any creepy crawlies in your boots? I'm a little bit sort of pedantic about that shit. I don't know, like my boots, I take my boots off inside me, me, uh, me room and then I sort of hide, hide. Someone had their boots pinched literally last week. So, oh, yeah. I, yes, a uh, new pair of boots. Someone bloody swiped them, but... No, but I'm unfortunate enough, I haven't had anything like that. No uh, bites or scratches or anything of the sort. So it's been good. Oh, that's that's lucky because my sister, Hard Hat Mentor, the safety weirdo I was talking about, hashtag safety yeah. weirdos rock. She, yeah. um, <laughs> she always has a laugh, you know, because we get our safety boots and we, especially people that leave them outside. I never left mine outside. I'm like you stick your hand in to see if there's anything in there that might bite your foot. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, what are those oxymoron? It? But it is. Is there something in there? Oh, no. Ow. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. Don't worry about my foot. I'll get bitten yeah. on the hand. Yeah, that's right. Well, we've had a few, um, a few good stories about boots. I won't, I won't share them with you because they're already on the podcast. So. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. Worries. Have you got anything you'd like to say or thoughts for especially new people? about um when you do get started and you're on the big money have you got any thoughts about the golden handcuffs and money side of mine um look i definitely say embrace it and enjoy it um i don't think mining's hard but i think it's hard mentally um it's hard on families and relationships and it's hard on your own uh, mindset you know being away and look I've been fortunate enough the longest I've done is seven and seven so that's seven days on seven days off um, you know I know guys have done 10 weeks on one week off um, you know really really long rosters and you know four and ones whatever the scenario there's many of them yeah. um, so you know if you're going to contribute uh, or dedicate your life to that sort of roster you know again enjoy it to begin with but I would definitely recommend there's nothing worse, like you said, the people that get stuck out there because they overcommit with the boats and the cars and the houses and everything else. Um, but, you know, I'm also live for the moment sort of thing. A, a common hashtag of mine is exist for the moment. Um, I'm an advocate for mental health and support through uh, a brand called Livin'. So they're my best friends that started that. Um, so I also sort of try push people to enjoy, you know, take each day for what it is because you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. Um, live for the moment because uh, you never know what's around the corner is what I usually say. So, yeah, um, just be wise about it, obviously. Um, but in, at the same time, I might not be the best example because I, I tell people to enjoy it. You know what I mean? Um, on your weeks back, enjoy the time with your family and friends. Um, you know, get your house, get your cars, get whatever it is, but set yourself a goal. And uh, from there on out, I would live your life um, rather than, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, but it's sort of, it doesn't go anywhere and you can't take it to the grave. So um, we recently uh, had a couple of fatalities in Queensland in the last two years. So, uh, you know, if those people haven't enjoyed their day or their lives living day to day, um, you know, it's great to make money and be out there, but I think you've also got to enjoy it as well. And you say we've had a couple, we've had eight. Eight, yeah. Eight exactly. in many months and it's fucked. Exactly. And my sister and I started um, hashtag one minute for our lost miners. Yeah. And that's about when we do have a fatality, having a minute silence at our pre-start. We don't know yeah. the ins and outs and what happened and the that'll all come out but we know everyone knows did you hear old mate last night or the other mm. day while we were on break Fuck that shit eh just have yeah. just and use it as an opportunity as a crew to come together to say this is why we're going to do it all right and this is why we're going to get home safe and that's that's, right. big, that's our big message Hashtag steel cap sisters. <laughs> We've got a collaboration uh, brand that's coming. So probably a, a podcast as well. Yeah, just me and my sister. No, but um, yeah, it, it's 
itchy and I have done a few episodes about it and that's what I was on the ABC about and stuff and did to just not stop and there's been a couple this year already. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's, yeah. uh, as I said, it's sad, but you know, obviously it's a dangerous industry. That's what people neglect as well is that it is a dangerous industry. That's right. um, that's why. The reason, you know, I got into my, I got into training for that purpose because um, obviously I, I, I'm enjoy learning and constantly uh, upskilling myself and educating myself personally. But also, like I said, if I can pass on some of that knowledge to others and teach and train them how to well, perform their work safely, you're going to go home every day. You know what I mean? It, it, no, it's sort of like drink driving. It's like anything. When we're young, we all make mistakes. But when we're older, we should be a little bit wiser. And life's so short, you know, you don't realise the side effects of what happens uh, when a life's taken away. Not so much to just uh, the individual themselves, but the side effects of what happens to the families and friends and work, like, you know, colleagues and stuff like that. Um, it can be really effective. So, um, you know, like I said, this is why I'm adamant about pushing safety and trying to stand by legislation and rules and regulations because they are cracking down on it. Um, they're slowly, you know, I, I could agree. Trust me, I bat for both sides of the fence. And while I agree, the regulators can be too harsh and some of the rules are just absolutely stupid. Yeah. Um, there's also what they're ignoring the reason why they're implementing more safety and more regulations because basically the people are taking shortcuts. They're not paying attention. They're, they're not doing it safely. They're not learning. And, and unfortunately, like I said, the evidence speaks for itself. This is why these injuries happen and why people get hurt. Yeah. And sometimes accidents just fucking happen as well. Well, they do. And That's it's right. the industry that we work in and it's yeah. something that people need to seriously seriously be aware of before they even consider coming in and that's why i do what i do like yeah. it's not just money and time off you know there's so much more yeah. there's so much more so yeah. speaking of making the most of living <laughs> and time off and um with family and stuff what is your special place your happy place, if you like, that you go to, Sean, when life turns to crap for you? What do you do? Uh, oh, what's my happy place? So probably the gym. The gym's a release for me. Um, I can let out a lot of energy and, um, you know, clear my mind in, in that aspect. But, again, being on the Gold Coast, I don't think there's anything better than watching a sunrise or a sunset. Um, going down the beach, I've got three dogs. Um, as much as they send me crazy they still make me laugh and no matter what they're always excited to see you you know as they say they're a man's best friend and you know i've been brought up a lot about around my friends as well i enjoy reaching out to my friends and um socializing with them so yeah many things i, I just like to live life to the fullest uh you know again I, I've, I've been reminded many times in my life that uh you're not going to get tomorrow back and uh you never know what tomorrow brings so if you don't really live for the moment, then you, you never know what's around the corner. That's, that's the biggest problem. And, uh, you know, they've just had this Kobe death, which is sad. And the people that were involved in the incident um, in the helicopter as well. And it touched the world. You know what yes. I mean? Bit. So it's, I think it's amazing when, when people do that. I, I used to get upset for many other reasons why people don't get upset for people that pass away or die or murdered or killed in wars and so forth. But um, I've tried to sort of avoid that side of things because, you know, if you try to fix the world and get upset about everything that goes wrong and follow the news, um, you know, you, you're going to live in a bad mindset. Try to see the good in things and how fortunate we are, how happy and lucky we are. And I try to remind myself every day, every time I get sick of mining or um, sick of being away or think that I'm missing out on something, I stop and think of how lucky or fortunate I am to be out there and to, you know, have such a good job or have such a skill set and have the business that I have that allows me to get up and sort of give me an ambition and drive every day to, to learn and want to do better and succeed. Thank you, Sean. Thanks so much. No worries. That's gold. In closing, Sean, do you have anything that you're super excited about right now that you'd like to share with us or is there anything else you'd like to say to call this episode complete for you? 
Um, I'd like to say uh, a shout out to yourself. I was uh, a student come through here and mentioned yourself to me. So oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, Gareth put me on to you. <laughs> so um, you know, obviously, well, um, networking works well. Um, obviously, there's Facebook pages out there, uh, mining jobs in the Bowen Basin. I highly recommend them. What they're doing there is truthful, factual. Yeah. And I'm still blown away by the time and effort that they put into giving that type of knowledge and advice to people. It's just beyond imaginable. So, um, again, like I said, there's people out there that are misleading and ripping people off. Uh, we're trying to do the opposite. We're trying to obviously give people a fair crack at, 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 as well as running a business. We've got big things to come here at Actor Group. Um, unfortunately, I mentioned earlier in regards to regulations and changes um, in the industry, uh, we basically weren't allowed to add any new courses or anything like that to scope until we'd been trading for two years. Oh, really? um, yeah, we trade for two years come the end of uh, March. So big things to come here at Active Group. So stay tuned. But yeah, like I said, spread the word. We're obviously here to, like I said, try and do the right thing by you. And we can only be open and honest. And uh, if we can keep networking between companies like ours and podcasts like yours and people out there that are trying to sh you know, spread the good message, then um, I think good will always outdo evil. Oh, only use your power for good. Yes. That's it. Oh, Thank sorry, you. That, that's my hard at mentor, my sister's saying, but I stole it, blister. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, but that, that, that's awesome. I, I guess one thing I didn't cover is we just spoke about your dump truck course and your uh, new starter course. What other, because yeah. you've got shitloads of other courses, right? Working yeah, definitely. Heights, blah, blah, blah. You can rattle them off. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Look, um, we cover all your basics from standard 11, work at heights, confined spaces, elevated work platforms. Um, we cover all your machinery tickets, so excavator, water carts, uh, roller, grader, um, uh, dump trucks, uh, uh, skid steer, okay? Um, and obviously we do... Uh, oh, the, look, everything's on our website, www.actorgroup.com.au. Um, feel free to jump on there. Stay tuned. As I said, we've got rescue courses coming. Um, we've got S1, 2 and 3s. We've got traffic, bitumus, um, uh, civil construction. So, yeah, we, we will have access to funding shortly as well. That's another area that was uh, speed bump put in front of us. So once we've got access to funding, then that's a lot easier for people that haven't had funding before, but we're doing everything by the book. So obviously everything we do is you're going to walk away here fully qualified and skilled. And the last thing I just want to mention, all these other quick short courses that make you, you know, are easy and, and quick to get. What you don't realize is you're running the risk that if you ever get caught or if the company ever gets caught or the, whoever it is figures out that you're not doing it right and the RTO gets shut down, you lose your qualification. You are no longer competent, you are no longer skilled, and you have to go somewhere else to do that. So please be aware. It doesn't happen to everyone. Some people get away with it, and good luck to them. I'm not here to bust their balls, but just understand that you are running the risk that uh, if that if that RTO does get caught up or audited and, and shut down, you instantly lose your qualification, which could mean that you lose your job, your employment, your income. You know, especially if you're in mining, you're making, you know, usually 100000 plus a year. For the sake of a couple of hundred dollars or a couple of thousand, spend the money, do it with the proper company that's going to give you currency and compliance. And like I said, you'll be safe and never put your job or your income at risk. And you'll have a lovely mindset as well by the sound of it because you are so coming from the right place. And I love how the universe does its shit and puts us all together with people and how I feel confident and really happy now that I've found someone that is doing courses that are legit that I can recommend and say to people, if you really want to do one, these are the guys to go and do them with because yeah. I haven't come across any, I had have reached out to a couple and they don't even, you know, they just you know, don't even answer you. So yeah, they're, <laughs> they're not good. Yeah. So, um, thanks so much, Sean. 
I really appreciate your time and I'm glad that my internet held out because a couple of times I came <laughs> up and said it was dodgy, like those dodgy courses. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, look, I appreciate your support. As I said, um, through your networks or through our uh, website or phone numbers on the website, give us a call. As I said, we're a bucket of information. We're just going to tell you the cold, hard truth. Everything we tell you is not made up. It's uh, in legislation and I can point you in the right directions to show you that we just follow the regulations. We don't make them up. Look, if I could take away half of these regulations, I would, but we can't. We're doing it, um, you know, how we're supposed to. We're current, we're, cl we're compliant, we're new. Um, so everything we have is never going to be at risk of you ever worrying about losing your licence or your qualification. Um, and again, I just want to say a shout out to you what, for what you're doing and all your supporters. Um, if we can all work together and be honest and, just be a little bit kinder to each other. Yeah. I think we're all going to be happier people. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sean. It's no time to say goodbye now. We could chat all day and I have been known to. <laughs> <laughs> all the links we discussed in this episode will be at madmumsy.com forward slash biz 66. And there'll be a link to your website and all the good stuff. Excellent. Awesome. No worries. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thanks, Sean. Bye. Okay. All the best. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Sean as much as we did. After we finished that conversation, we had a pretty good in-depth chat all about the Standard 11 and he wanted to come back on the podcast. I said we could keep doing it now and I'll add it in, but he didn't want to bamboozle you with too much in the next part, which is a lot more about legislation and stuff, so great news he's going to come back on next week so I'm going to make that the next episode 67 he's just going to pop out and do a swing out at work and then all going well we're going to catch up and dive deep into his passions about the standard 11 who would have thought you'd have a passion about that <laughs> and other inductions and stuff so you can look forward to that but all the links we spoke of will be, as usual, available at madmumsy.com forward slash beers 66. And that's M-U-M-Z-I-E. And the number sucks, sucks. If you're enjoying the podcast, please share with your mates. And if they want to know more about getting a start in the mining industry, head to Mad Mumsy's way. I've got heaps of resources on the website and now a growing number of online courses over at mining.teachable.com. Until next time, stay safe, be real, be special, and have fun, for we only live once. Cheers.